truth will set us free. Truth and Gospel Music, lead singer of the rock band U2, Bono, has criticized whitewashing endemic to the gospel music industry. An avid reader of the Book of Psalms, Bono expresses distrust concerning modern Christian singer-songwriters who try to gloss over the grittier messages of the Old Testament. Instead of songs focused on Jesus making everything perfect, Bono expressed desire for songs about their bad marriage. Write a song about how they got pissed off at the government. Bono's friend and collaborator, Bible translator Eugene Peterson, goes on to explain his belief that Yahweh really desires the hurt and disappointment and difficulty of being a human being, and a mutual suspicion of mainstream Christian artists who display a lack of realism. Looking to the Old Testament as a plentiful source of inspiration for themes of hurt and disappointment, Bono and Peterson are releasing a short film called The Psalms, describing the book as the basis of the pair's friendship and desire to inject a dose of painful realism into the world of gospel-themed media. Of special interest are songs and prayers that plead with Yahweh to bring curses and calamities upon the unworthy. Peterson claims how important it is to tell people how mad we are. The goal in the creation of the short film is to rekindle interest in the Psalms among churchgoers. Is Britain going the way of Pakistan? Across much of Europe, most Muslims find the freedom to worship at their mosques free from harassment, except from other Muslims. In Britain, the 2.7 million strong Muslim population tends to be tight-knit, but sectarian strife is part of that fabric as religious and ethnic hate crimes increased by nearly 18% over the two years, according to Metropolitan Police figures. At the center of the latest controversy are the Ahmadis, a minority sect of roughly 30,000 among the millions more mainstream British Muslims. In Dundee, Edinburgh, and Glasgow, bus banners are proclaiming a two-week campaign pledging the population to be united against extremism. A relevant message as the dominant Sunni and Shia branches double down on a message of interreligious hatred. Tensions escalated following a brutal murder in Glasgow earlier this year of a popular Ahmadi shopkeeper Assad Shah, known for YouTube mini-sermons of tolerance and goodwill for fellow Muslims and Christians alike. He was a brother, a real gentleman who interacted with the community, according to Basharat Nazir, press secretary for the Ahmadiyya Muslim Association. Shah was murdered by Tanvir Ahmed, a Muslim from Bradford, on the charge that his peaceful message from the shopkeeper had disrespected Islam. While the Muslim Council of Britain does condemn the murder of Assad with a recent uptick in religious violence, the organization highlights the problem. Most Muslims do not classify the Ahmadis as co-religionists. A leaflet campaign has been launched asking mainstream Muslims to boycott Ahmadi shops. Most members of the community tell stories of blatant discrimination in which they are refused or dismissed from employment by other Muslims and are refused service in restaurants purely on sectarian grounds. The Ahmadis consider themselves the most enlightened form of Islam and count a prophet born in the 19th century as a successor to Muhammad. This new prophet was supposedly inspired by a vision of Jesus Christ who escaped crucifixion for an ecumenical mission to India in Ahmadi theology. As diverse flavors of the Abrahamic God so continuous discord among believers, there is a concerned voice by Ahmadi leader Rafiq Ahmad Hayat that Britain will become like Pakistan. Army Advisors tells victims only Jesus can heal rape. The Army conducts yearly mandatory meetings regarding rape and sex trafficking, but the speaker at this year's event is causing some controversy. Guest speaker Tawan McCarthy told nearly 300 soldiers assembled at Redstone Arsenal Post that the only way to truly overcome the horrors of rape and sex trafficking is to have Jesus as your king. The Military Religious Freedom Foundation has been contacted by 26 of the Redstone personnel since the April 27th event, most of them Christian, but critical of the forum being used to tout a particular religion. Mikey Weinstein, president and founder of the MRFF, said in a statement, We've tried to reach out through informal means to talk with the command. These people want an apology and to make sure the situation is corrected. Without disciplinary action, you don't get any change, Weinstein said. His organization wants the Army to conduct an in-depth investigation and punish the people responsible for turning what should have been a secular event into an opportunity to witness for Jesus. Many secular groups have been critical of the military leadership's pro-Christianity bias for years, stating that's a clear church-state violation. But both military leaders and politicians have been slow to enact changes due to resistance encountered from religious groups. It's not clear that this sort of behavior will come to an end anytime soon.